Stop creating memory for your AI agents because they can create it by themselves. This is the new solution called MemEvolve that has open source a way that you can let your AI agent design and evolve not only the memory but also the architecture of the memory of your project so you no longer need to create a memory system by yourself because this solution will give you the best specialized architecture of memory that you can use it in your agent without you designing it. In this video I'm going to show you how this open source solution works and how you can use it right now in your AI projects. Let's check it out. You have seen a variety of different ways that you can create memory for your AI agent. So that's not a sort of a new topic. And you might have this question that this is already resolved. So what is this paper is talking about? Well, there is one critical problem with all these memory systems that you might have encountered with, which is, as they noted here, this paradigm that means current designs of memory is fundamentally constrained by what? By staticity of the memory system itself. So what does that mean? There are a variety of different ways that you can design a memory uh, system. It can be just a simple rag that you can retrieve past experiences that the AI agent has interaction with the user. So for example, it knows how to answer this new query based on similar experiences, fail or success that happened last time. Or when you go to right now with ChatGPT, for example, it knows some information about you if you have the memory turned on. So it retrieves those past experiences, past information about you, some facts about, for example, myself, MG. So it gave me a tailored, personalized answer using that memory. But the architecture of the memory is fixed. Is retrieving like a rag is the best way for having that memory for my agent? Or no, for my use case, I need to do keyword search or keyword plus semantic search or I should call some tools, execute some codes or do any other stuff to retrieve memory or design as a memory. There are, again, if you search the literature, there are a variety of different architectures and tools or pieces of puzzle you can stitch together to call it a memory. But how would I know which one is the best one? Well, you don't need to because this solution has fixed that for you. So what MemEvolve is trying to achieve is that let's try to define memory in four pieces. Each memory has encode, store, retrieve, and manage. With defining these four, which I'm going to explain much more in details, we are going to let the AI agent design by itself what is the best memory for design for this use case. What's the best way to encode? What's the best way to store? What's the best way to retrieve and manage the memory? So as you're using your AI agent, your AI agent is designing the system of the memory by itself. And when I say designing the system of the memory or architecture, I don't mean updating the memory. That's something that has been solved. I'm talking about the whole architecture of the memory can be redesigned and evolved as you use your agent if you implement this solution. So let's get into the details of that. They noted in the paper that when they applied this approach to some of the state of the art solution and using different models, they got around sometimes to 70 or 20% on average uh, performance increase. But they got the analogy from like human learn. Sometimes I'm a mediocre learner. That means I don't have any memory. I'm just calling LLM. Here's the answer and here's the question. That's it. But on a secondary stage, I'm a skillful learner. Sometimes I'm gonna go and ask some tools, some services, and some skills to answer, but I don't necessarily try to change my learning way. But adaptive learner is the one that actually systematically adapt how it learns, or better to say, it learns how to learn. Some people are visual, some people are textual learners, but that doesn't mean I always learn the best through text. Maybe even I learn physics, it's different than when I learn music, right? So as human, we have different sort of how we use memory and update our memory based on what a specific skill or task we are learning or interacting with. So the same idea is now happening with the AI agents. So let's do not hard code a rigid memory system for the AI agent. Let them choose what should be the architecture of learning based on your use case. All right, so let's get into the solution to see how they do that. On the left side, let's follow my pointer because there are too many stuff here. So I want to make sure that it is simplified here for you. They define the pieces of a memory architecture on four components. Encode, which is about how we are creating the uh, steps that we have made through interacting with a uh, question through that use case. Let's say it's a trajectory or a step and how do we encode it to save it somewhere, let's say in a 
uh, vector database, just as one example, or maybe in a JSON file, or a local vector DB, or whatever, that they try it out different ways. And then the store, okay, what is that uh, place that you're gonna store it? Is it just a vector database? Is it like a knowledge graph? And then retrieve. How I'm going to retrieve those information back from that source? Is it a semantic search, keyword search, a combination of both? Or again, the right of different ways. And lastly, manage. How I'm going to consolidate past experiences in the memory? How are we going to merge them, summarize them, update them, or forget them? Maybe some memory that I don't need to no longer keep it. So defining these steps will let now understand what we are going to evolve. All these four components are going to evolve and just dynamically get changed as you're using your AI agent if you apply memory evolve approach. And here is how. First, we are going to have the first candidate, the candidate of the best architecture of the memory. Let's say here, naively, I'm just going to do, let's say, uh, semantic search. That's it. There's a task and I do a semantic search to retrieve some information from the past memory that I have to give a more personalized answer or more accurate answer. That's it. Now this candidate, which is the best one so far, goes to the next stage, but now we have two versions of a better candidates, potentially better. Let's test them. Another candidate will go not only just semantic search, but also it will do hybrid search. For example, it can apply also keyword search to retrieve the information better. The other candidate not only do that, but also it will also apply a granular abstraction. It does some summary. It calls some tools to retrieve better information as memory. And this one so far was better compared to the other candidate. So this one goes to the next evolutionary process. You can see that I am keep keeping the best candidate and going to the next stage as I am testing this memory architecture. And when I go through this iteration using maybe 50 or 100 questions, examples that you have for your use case, now this main evolve system will use AI to create a report on what was the best uh, architecture, how it will start to see which candidate has the best performance, best efficient cost, and potentially uh, the best from the latency perspective or delay. And then it will use these logs, all the tasks that you have done and executed over using each different candidates of memory design to create a diagnosis report. That report will tell you what solution worked, which one was too lengthy, which one was the best one, it was, was up to the point, which one was big. So all this strategy that different candidates use in this report will be captured. So it will give this on backend in a very cra well-crafted prompt to an LLM that, hey, we had this initial very naive design of the memory. We got it better and better and better. And here's the diagnosis report of all different types of architectures. Which one is the best one? Take it, go and implement it. So it will code a new architecture of the memory that might use any of this or all of this or combination of all these different approaches to have an updated version of all these four components that we discussed about. That means for one use case, maybe this naive memory is good enough, but for your use case that you're designing right now, there's gonna be a whole new type of memory architecture that I have no clue about it, but this is designed specifically for you based on 100 sample uh, questions, answers, or whatever use case tasks that you have in your agentic solution to have that architecture getting created for you. And now you have the best memory, you go and have your solution in production. But after a while, if your use case get changed or some new questions or queries come to the agent that are new, you can just run the same solution and update the architecture of the memory. So you have the freeze state that you just keep updating these candidates to find the best one. And then you go to the online stage, which you are in production. But you can always go back to the freeze state and start this inner loop of defining what's the best architecture of the memory. For giving you as a reference, they have added also in the paper when they implemented this approach, they try to have different memory uh, architectures that has been uh, previously announced in different papers. They implemented that to compare with MemEvolve. So these are state-of-the-art memory settings, and then they applied on different use cases. You can see that on MemEvolve, how was the performance? You can see this got the best score, and you can see the cost, delay, and number of steps. You can compare the same thing with different use cases like experience and web walker. So again, as they noted, they almost got 70% improvement on compared to the state of the art uh, memory architectures that has been implemented uh, before prior to this uh, paper. 
And here is an implementation example of that. But before I go through it, let's see a couple of the results that they got when they compared this mem evolve with other memories to see how the models or agents get uh, more performant. You can see that as we increase the number of questions that we ask from the agent, let's say from zero all the way to 150 question, all different memory implementations, they sort of gradually start to get better and better and more stable because at the beginning, the agent has no memory. So the accuracy is very dynamic or the cumulative actual accuracy. But as we go further, you will see that they get stabilized, but from almost all of them, all different use cases, like ex uh, expense and WebWalker, you can see the blue line, which is MemEvolve, is always has the highest accuracy compared to the other ones. Now, here's actually an implementation of that illustration of this progressive approach. At the beginning, you can see that we are in the freeze stage, encode, store, retrieve, and manage. We have no manage here. We just have a, let's say, simple retrieval with using reasoning retrieval and refinement, sort of a rack. And then with mental evolve, we have now two candidates. This one use some skills to encode and we store that to a JSON, like embeddings, for example. And now with retrieve, now we have hybrid retrieve, but still there is no manage. This one, something similar. It has more strategy on encode, but it has some guardrails rails to make sure we are not fetching wrong or distract the information from the memory so something better this one got the candidate because this performed better on the sample use cases so it goes to the next stage you can see that this now we have some different encoding aspect for both and then we have a store which is a storing the item list this one has a database now designed for storing the embeddings and the retrieve is also different. It's guided probe gating. I'm, I'm also not sure exactly what gating means here, but it's technically a new retrieval approach compared to previous candidate. And then going to the last, this is the candidate, the winning candidate that has actually, I think it goes to the knowledge graph because I see some edge proning and node. So it figured out this sort of manage, retrieve and store and encode is better for this use case. If like me, you're keen to actually implement this solution, you don't need to because they have open source all the codes of this paper. I will add the link of this paper on Discord channel because I have reference of all the videos there created very clean. So you don't need to search all the video descriptions to figure that out. So if you click on the Discord channel link on the video description below, go to the reference section in the channel. You will see the list of all the papers, codes, repos that I have used and create videos, including this one. And when you go to the paper, they have added the GitHub link of their code. And if you go there, they have actually added the implemented code for implementing and testing MemEvil. I haven't personally tested or played around with the code with, which I'm keen to actually give it a shot. And if you're keen on knowing that how I do it, maybe I can record another video. Just let me know because I want to test it for myself to see how it works in action, besides understanding the concept. But I found out that actually the concept is very fascinating and sort of makes sense. And I'm pretty sure that you might have face off with how to design the best memory system and there are a variety of different ways for your use case. But I figured out having the memory that is designed just for your use case, even not by you, is really interesting idea. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, I would be very thankful if you click on like icon and make sure you share your, share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below and subscribe so you won't miss the next video. Thank you so much.